Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I have a really interesting um, topic that just came up recently. Um, it's been circulating in the um, gambling industry for quite a while now. And I wanted to actually do a video so we can actually talk about it and um, kind of analyze what's happening and see if what's happening is actually a good idea. Um, just before the video actually starts, please make sure to leave a like if you're new here. Make subscribe if you haven't already. It helps the channel grow and motivates me to create this type of content for you guys to hopefully um, keep you educated and actually make some money as well. But now let's get straight into the video. In today's video, I want to discuss affordability checks that have creeped up recently. Um, it's been all over my social media. It's been on Twitter, Facebook, everywhere. Everyone's been talking about it. And I want to talk about what, about what impact that might have on people like you and I who do things like match betting, who do like to use gambling as a way to make money and use things like Betfair Exchange and some markets. And so, so as you can see on the screen right now, um, the Betting and the Gaming Council have recently, um, on the 7th of February, released a statement saying that they're building up on a new code of conduct from last September to make online gambling a safer place for players and here he goes to talk about what's been done but instead of doing that let's just cut straight to the actual article and just talks about what things are going to be added on so somewhere here uh, it mentions about slowing down the game cycle speed of 2.5 seconds so people that do play slots um can't play them as fast as they once played which it's a bit um I'm going to leave my comments and my conclusions towards the end of the video, but it's so I said this will be in place by the end of the so it's already by the time it was already in place. And if I look at this article that came out on the 2nd of February, it basically says exactly that, that the previous one said with um, new permanent bans, reverse things on the reverse withdrawals, auto play options, and this faster than 2.5 seconds. Um, I think. This is definitely a step forward to getting people to gamble less on the slots, I guess. It's a bit of a interesting one because if someone, let's say, if I'm addicted to playing slots, having to wait an extra second or two for, my, for another slot turn isn't really going to um, demotivate me from gambling or want to spend another 50 quid on it. I think it just means that people that are already addicted to it will end up gambling for a longer period of time, which could be even worse. You know, before maybe I used to spend an hour, but maybe now I'm going to spend two, three hours doing it because it takes me longer to kind of feed my need of gambling. Um, now, to be fair, I don't actually think that they're doing what they should be doing. I think, I don't think this is a step forward, but I think it's a very small step forward. I think instead of people slowing the slots down why don't you actually try and get people to not play slots at all we all know that slots are there designed for you to lose money if you play if you play slots once or twice you might get lucky and hit a big win and win 100 quid but if you do it in a long time if you do it for a month or two you will end up losing a lot of money so instead of that why aren't these gambling commissions and all these um, governing bodies why are they not actually increasing their awareness so, so people stop gambling though so they stop wasting their hard earned money on those things um another thing obviously putting emphasis on the bookies and actually getting them to take some of their um problems that come with it so you know if someone like me has been betting for you know two three weeks and been playing slots and you can see that i've been losing out money why are they not using the power that they have to simply restrict me and ban me just like they would if I was winning loads of money. Why is it that it's okay for me to lose out money, but when I'm starting to make money, they restrict me. So that is a big problem that I think needs to be addressed instead of slowing down the slot times to 2.5 seconds. Now, another topic that creeped up recently is affordability checks. And so as you can see on the screen here, there's an article from um, the 2nd of February, um, just a few days ago, and talks about the four districts and that the fact that they're actually even worse um, than we think they are. And so I think if this does come in into place and think from um, places like Bet365, William Hill, Ladbrokes and your, all your other major bookies starting off for the billy checks, I feel like that's going to be putting us, the customers and people who use them to make money even in even more trouble, well, I wouldn't say trouble, even more problems and cause even more concern. Because as you can see here, it says that 
paying him lose a, perhaps as little as hundred pounds a month should prompt um demands for evidence they can afford to risk such a sum. And when you think about it, hundred pounds is really not a lot of money. That's something that's around about three pounds thirty three, let's say four quid a day if you lose. And so if I lose hundred pounds in a month, let's say I think I can afford, they start asking me for all these um proofs, you know, can I afford to lose and I don't think that's not something I'd be personally comfortable with. I don't think other people are comfortable with it as well. But when you think about it, it can be seen as a good thing as well. Once again, um this is just my opinion, this is just what I'm reading and what I can see from what's being um released from different articles and these governing bodies and well of course you know it is a definite step forward because um these gambling companies will have to carry out checks and actually to you know if i'm uh, someone who can't afford to lose that money and you know i'm losing money i'm going into debt then the companies will be able to see and will be able to ban me or you know restrict my stakes and that sort of thing so i guess yeah it's definitely a step in a good um in a good way but on the other hand this is also a problem because well firstly let's say i earn 100k a year and i can afford to lose you know 100 pounds a week that's not really tackling the problem that is you know gambling addiction that that person might be experiencing and you know all the suffering that will be around him you know that you know maybe he's suffering from it. maybe he's not being able to use that money for other things you know such as providing for the family and um, instead he's wasting a bit for bet three six five. Does that mean just because he's afford he can afford to lose that money? Does that make it okay? Which obviously it doesn't. So that is a big problem in itself. Now another problem that comes up with affordability checks is the fact that these gambling companies will be able to look at your bank accounts and your bank statements and your financial data. That of course they will use to their own advantage. What are you going to do with it? Is they simply going to choose and they're going to probably sell it on to third parties and they will use their information to advertise for you and basically have no benefit to you but they will use it to then much to make even more money and so to kind of end this section of the topic is that it's not actually going to tackle the actual problem that is you know gambling addiction and people struggling financially and people actually you know ruining their lives because of gambling what this is simply doing is seeing if you can afford to lose money or not. But the fact that even if I can afford to lose the money doesn't mean, you know, it's not concerning me, or it's not causing me any harm. So I feel like the way that these comments are going around it, it's definitely a step forward, but I don't think it's a big step in the correct direction. I think um, there could be more done about it to actually have a bigger impact. Now, another problem that these affordability checks are going to have on us, the consumers, the customers, is the fact that when it comes to match betting, which is something that I've been doing now for quite a bit and it's actually proving to be a very good success for me, is that let's say you take um, the Bet365 um, £100 sign up um, bonus. That basically means that what you do is you bet £100 on Bet365 and then you lay the other sum of money on your markets or your Betfair exchange or whatever exchange you're using. But that essentially means that you could potentially lose up £100 just like that. And so it means that if you want to use that account again to lay, um, let's say, a free bet, you would have to um, send Bet365 a proof that you can afford it. Of course, if you send them your bank statement, they will be able to see all the history and where you spend your money and what you buy. And so in that case, they will end up seeing that you use Betfair and Smarkets. So all that means is that they're going to do that. They'll go on your account and they'll simply have a restrict you straight away or just ban you and they'll probably end up putting something in the um, terms and conditions that if they've seen you doing this do again ultimately a ban so you could end up not even maybe getting your free bet and so this could be a huge huge negative effect on the match betting um, industry or part of the gambling sort of side now of course what other things they could consider in terms of just in, in terms of not doing the affordability checks and all the other things they could be doing is to actually hold the bookmakers accountable. So I think what needs to be done is we shouldn't be able to send in our bank statements to Bet365, William Hill, Ladbrokes. There should be a independent governing body who's set up to monitor this thing. Something, something that isn't funded by Bet365 or 
other gambling companies, something that's funded by the government to monitor people. Now, when it comes to, you know, sending my information to them, I'll be much more much more happy to send my information to a company that I know they're simply going to check if I'm of if I can afford to lose that money or not and I know they they won't use it to their advantage now another thing they could do is they could actually use the algorithms to monitor how much money I'm losing so let's say I've just signed up and I started losing out money from my first bet and two weeks in um 400 pounds it um minus 400 pounds and you know i've lost out you know 400 pounds they could use the same algorithms that they use to monitor those people who are successful straight away that they restrict in matter of hours or days they could use the same algorithms to actually find the people who are struggling and are addicted and are losing out on money and simply banning them or putting restrictions on their account just the way they do if you win a lot of money they restrict your account to one or two bets same thing with people who are very addicted and, you know, lose out lots of money. Why can't Bet365 put a restriction on how much they can bet, you know, make them be able to bet £2? Because if they're not able to bet a lot of money, they can't lose a lot of money. And it's simple as that. Of course, there's no problem that could arise with that. And that is the fact that people will find um, the black market betting and that's already a big problem, as you can see. Um, it's been doubling so in that case it'll probably triple and quadruple and get even worse but i think you know just how they make their credit cards um do as well when you sign up for a new credit card you don't get up to three thousand pound limit straight away you have to build up your credit score so why can't bookmakers like bet friskers find william hill do the same thing where you know if you're new to the account and they have no betting information about you why can't they have you know 10 20 pound uh, maximum stakes restricted onto your account and then if you're proven to be a sensible gambler um you know then they can slowly increase your stakes but of course they're not going to do that because they wouldn't be making 250 million pounds a year in profit if they were doing that so yeah but as i said this is my opinion if you want to have your opinion on it make sure you go into the gambling commission's um question or the survey they're doing right now on your screen my link i'm going to leave a link to it in the description down below so make sure you voice your um, opinion I think it closes on the 9th of February, so there's only a couple of days to do it. But yeah, this is my opinion. I'll be very interested to hear your opinion, so please leave it in the comment section down below. But thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you're new here. I'll see you later for now.